So hello and uh, welcome to a little review. Uh, you've just seen me unboxing the um, Freewell Ammo, ammo something. <laughs> I'm going to get it back out again just so I can have a look at it. And it's very, very windy. I hope the volume's okay. Yeah, it's an ammo ferric, ammo ferric lens. That's what I was trying to say before. Uh, you've just seen me unboxing it and pulling it out. And this is this little tiny ammo ferric lens inside here. Freewell have been kind enough to send this to me along with a, another filter I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, and just basically do a little review on it. Um, I'm not being paid by Freewell at all. This is just literally a review on my little Osmo, which you can see is down here below. Um, so I'm going to take it out of the box and literally show you what it does straight away by putting it on the Osmo. Now I've got the Osmo on record, I've just started recording with it and I've got a nice little panoramic scene that I'm just going to zoom across the scene for you. I'm at Windermere Lake in uh, the Lake District and uh, it's an absolutely stunning scene standing just here and just having a look across the lake and you can see right down there in the distance all the light going across the fells really really quite nice so i'm going to take this off now i'm just going to show you what this lens actually does and at the moment i have no idea what this does apart from it's supposed to make it look very cinematic um, and it's supposed to give it the little bars and that's the thing there it's a tiny tiny little filter you can, you can see by my thumbnails uh, it's an extremely small little filter, very well made, made on the CNC. Um, and it's got a lovely little piece of glass in the middle of it. Now I'm going to bung it on the front of the Osmo just to see what it does. And it's magnetic, as you can see, it just literally clips on the front of the uh, filter and stays on there quite nicely, literally just attaches itself like so. It's supposed to be gimbal friendly as well, which is also quite a nice little item. And uh, I'm just going to see by looking at the lens what it's doing when I put it on and uh, I can't quite see what it's actually doing but I'm gonna have to get down there and actually hold the lens and and have a look and see what the uh, the difference is and I'm just going to zoom across again just to actually get an idea why I'm panning the Osmo across the scene and do it with and without and see what the actual difference when I put it back onto the computer and have a look and uh, see what this little amorphemic amorphemic lens does uh, for your footage and again I'm just going to lift it off and just have a look yeah and from where I'm stood at the moment I can't quite see what the actual difference is so what I need to do now is I'm just going to put that back in its box keep that in there safe and it comes in a lovely little box you can keep four filters in which is great and it's magnetic as well so really a good little item to keep in your bag very very small and tidy so I'm going to switch this off turn that off record I'm now going to get down and sit down on the bench which is just over here and I'm going to have a proper look and see what we're doing so I've got the uh, Osmo up in front of me now, as you can see, I'm looking right across Windermere. It's such a lovely view, really is. You can see why thousands of people flock to this area every single year. And I'll switch the Osmo back on and I'm just going to have a look through the actual viewfinder and see what it's doing in front of me. And at the moment I've got the screen set to a wide screen. I think that's the difference. I think the screen on this is set to wide and I need to set it to a normal screen. And then the amorphic lens, I think you find what it does, it turns it into a very cinematic view by putting the black stripes on the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to have a mess with the settings on the camera and then I'm going to come back to you and explain what it is we're doing. So as you can see, I've got my uh, Osmo and a big microphone on the front of it. And I've also got it on a little tripod and I'm just getting this uh, filter out. And what I've done is I've switched my screen now to uh, a full screen. So it's showing me the whole picture on the front of the screen. And I'm going to hit record and I'll start recording on the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loop this onto the front and I'm going to stick it to the front of my lens like so and it literally just sits on the front and uh, oh I've tilted the lens up let's tilt it back down so I can see what we're doing right so now we've got it on the front of the lens I'm uh, just running record and I've tilted it down and again I'm just going to lift it off the front and pop it back on and just to see what sort of difference it makes get hold of the filter lift it off and then lift it back on and uh, I'm not actually seeing any difference. I really need to put this on the big screen to have a look. But this is with the filter on. And then this is with the filter off. So can you tell me what the difference is? Okay, so I've had a play with this little thing. And uh, like I said, this is supposed to be gimbal safe. And it activates nicely with it still on and it hasn't flipped off. So it definitely stays on the lens at the front, as you can see there. I'm just going to turn it off and turn it back on again so you can see what it does. There we go, hit the button, on she goes, she flips down and flips up. And it's staying on the front of the lens quite nicely. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you, until I get onto the computer screen, 
I really don't know what that does. So it's quite embarrassing really because I'm not quite sure what this little filter does. Uh, I've changed the view on the back now, it's a big square of view. Um, and you can see this nice little boat floating across over there and the big boat's coming now. Look at this, it's coming across the Windermere, one of the Windermere uh, yachts that take you out for your tours. And that's with the filter on at the moment. And I'm just gonna pull the filter off while it's recording, like so, it's now off. And there's the boat, it's still floating. Oh, it gives you a honk on the horn as well. But I'm really not quite sure. That looks a really, really pretty boat going like that. And the filter goes back on. And it gives a very, yeah, it's dulled the image down a little bit and it's made it look a little bit more retro. I think that's maybe a, maybe quite a, a thing for it. But uh, other than that, I'm really not quite sure. That's the filter on and that's the filter off. So can you tell the difference? Is there a difference in that? But what a stunning boat to be filming as we're going along. Filters off and the filters back on again. There's definitely a difference in the screen, uh, but it's a very tiny screen to be looking at. So um, I need to put it back to widescreen and have another look. Um, this is the future me. And I'm, I'm talking about this lens that I've been calling the wrong name all the time, haven't I? I've been calling it an amophemic, amophemic, and it's not, it's an anamorphic. It's an anamorphic lens, and that's because I'm dyslexic and I don't read very well. So I thought I'd just explain that while I was going along. Um, yeah, on the field, when I was up at the Lake District, and this is about three weeks, four weeks uh, since I did that video, and you can see the videos there in the background. Um, I just wanted to switch back on and just explain myself a little bit better. Um, I'd done no research on this filter whatsoever before I actually started videoing. Um, I wanted to literally do it straight off the cuff like I normally do. The problem with that is I didn't understand what it actually did. I had an idea what it was doing, but I wasn't 100% sure. Since I've come back, I now understand what it does and why it does what it does. Right, so I've just got the Osmo switched on and uh, I've got the lens in my hand. What, what this lens is, is it's got like a, a concave look to it. And what this does is when you switch it onto the front of the lens, and I'm going to switch on the Osmo now. I've had a problem with the Osmo. The problem with I've had with the Osmo is the battery keeps going flat. I was going to do this on, uh, I've just come back from the east coast of UK and I was going to do this over there, but the battery was dead. It was completely flat for no other reason and it's nearly dead now. It's down to 70% and I charged it last night. Um, yeah, what this does is it takes the field of view and it crushes everything. Um, because it's concave, as you look through this, it actually squashes everything down. You'll see by looking at these boxes as we've got in front of us there, the two boxes, this is the thumbnail image I've got on my computer screen. If you keep an eye on them, they're quite square. In fact, they're very square. When I put this filter on the front, which I'm gonna do so now, when I put the filter on the front, you'll see that it almost crushes them slightly, but you're getting a lot more down the sides of the frame. You can now see the edges of my computer screen and uh, it's a lot wider than what it was. And if I lift this off for you, very carefully, so just lift it off, like so. You'll see that now the edges of the frame have come back to being right on the edge of the picture and the boxes are square. So if I put that back on again, you'll see now that the picture's a lot longer. I could not see this in um, on the field when we were out you know, at the Lake District. I couldn't see because the screen was so small and it was outdoors. When I got back and put the images on the screen, I could actually work out what it was doing. And the idea between that is what it's doing is it's compressing the image right down and squashing the image so that when you go into your editing suite, and I use Premiere, when you go into your editing suite, you can then take that image and you can drag it out to the edges of your frame. So if you're using a 1080p screen or 19, is it 1920 or 1929 screen or something like that, um, a wide angle screen, 16 by nine, you can stretch that compressed image out to the edges of the frame and it gives you those black border lines at the top of the frame. And that's why it's uh, designed to do what it's supposed to do. It compresses down the image and it gives you those little black borders at the top and at the bottom of the frame. Once you've got that image and you've stretched it out, and made it fit the screen. And I'm gonna flick you back over to me, chunnering and waffling on back in the past that I didn't know what I was talking about. Now as in true Compton style, my battery's just died on the Osmo and I had had it on charge last night, but I think my uh, fuse has gone in, <coughs> excuse me. I think the fuse has gone in the charger that I had it plugged into, so I need to check it in the van in a moment. Um, so yeah, I've tried that out. I've had a bit of a tinker with it, and like I say, it's really, really well made. It's highest quality you can possibly ask for. It's beautiful looking little piece of glass, and it's so tiny, tiny. And uh, it comes in a box, and it comes with some extras, um, which you probably saw me unwrapping just now. And the extras in the box, I'm just gonna explain what we've got in here. We've got a, a little sticker, 
always love a good sticker. Lifetime warranty. So we've got a lifetime warranty with this item, which is absolutely fantastic. And we've got a, a lens cloth in this little pouch as well. Uh, with the filter on, let's just hit record for you. With the filter on, I'm trying to just focus on this little uh, light beam just there. And you can see it's causing these little light rays as you catch the light. And it's quite a pretty cinematic look. And uh, I think it really works very nice. Uh, it really does give that cinematic feel. And if I pull the lens off, you can see that you lose them beams. It's not got that same streak of light as you can see going through the trees and put the filter back on like so and you get those lovely little light beams really makes it quite cinematic as you get all that lovely flickering light through the trees and stuff like that so look at that look at the little beams of light coming through the trees so that's really quite pretty as long as we're putting your your bars of light on there you go filter is on filters on just losing the light I just slide it off like so and you lose those light beams you just get a flare so uh, yeah I quite like that little effect very cool that'd be really good at night doing night photography that's for sure so uh, that's another another little effect it does and my god it's windy but what a great location eh? Windermere Lake <laughs> albeit not in the wind you know it's not my style to be very cinematic and things like that but like I say free will sent this and I'm more than happy to play with it and have a go. It's got a curved uh, look to the lens and I'm gonna try it later on. I'm gonna put the lights on on the car and see what it does with the lights and the flare on the lights. And when I get on the wide screen as well, when I get it on the big screen, I'll be able to see if I've got those film bars across the top and the bottom of the image. Uh, I'm sure I have. Uh, it's just, you know me, I don't do a lot of reading. With being dyslexic, I don't take all the information in from words, but I do know that it's very well made. It's magnetic, so it sticks on the front of the lens very, very easy. As you can see here, I bring it down and it just takes it off and it literally sticks on with magnets on the front of the lens and you can switch the camera on like so and it stays on the front perfectly now that's enough of me talking about this little filter um, thanks for watching don't forget like and subscribe to my other videos I do a lot of landscape photography I have got one other filter is it worth me putting that on at the same time because they've sent me this they sent me two and the other one's this one and it's a free will wide angle lens would it be interesting to see how good the uh, lake is behind with this on so i'm going to unbox this i'm going to shove this on the front as well and i can actually compare this to my other one because i've actually got another one in my pocket that i use already so i'm going to get this out and compare it to the other one and see what the difference is between the two so yeah there's the uh there's the little osmo with the um amorph anamorphic anamorphic amorphic anamorph anamorph whatever it is <laughs>